Hello, Tim Sandal here and delighted to be back with you for another video. And this video is all about electron beam sterilization or E-beam for short. And this is a form of beta radiation. And like any other form of sterilization, it exists to render the target article free of viable microorganisms. And E-beam has been around for a very long time but it's becoming increasingly used given the problems that are being experienced with gamma radiation. Now, the problem with gamma radiation is a global shortage, partly due to regulations, in terms of getting hold of the isotope necessary for gamma. So our focus is increasingly on technologies like X-rays and E-beam, and E-beam is a subject here. So electron beam processing or electron irradiation involves using electrons at high energy. And the focus here is sterilization, although it's used in other sectors, for example, altering the colors of gemstones or in material science to cross-link polymers. But to sterilize an object, the object is bombarded with high energy electrons. And this leads to a cascade of these electrons being directed through the target material. And this form of technology is suitable for plastics, heat liable materials, glass and powders. Now in terms of electrons, these are elementary particles that possess a negative electrical charge. And electrons exist either bound to an atomic nucleus as the conduction of electrons in the atomic lattice of metals, for example, or they exist as free electrons, particularly in a vacuum. And the vacuum concept is very important to the E-beam technology. So it's been shown that free electrons in a vacuum can be accelerated with their paths controlled by electric and magnetic fields. In this way, narrow beams of electrons carrying high kinetic energy can be released upon collision with atoms. And that is the basis of the sterilization technology. There's some important concepts that we need to consider, particularly in terms of units and measurements. So electron energies typically vary and they're in the KeV to MeV range. And this depends upon the depth of penetration. Remember, penetration is the basis of sterilization that's required. Now, EV refers to electron volt, and that's the standard unit of measurement in electrostatic particle accelerator sciences. And an electron volt is the amount of kinetic energy gained or lost by a single electron accelerating from rest through an electric potential difference of one volt in a vacuum. So essentially it's, it's a measure of the energy required. And the M and the K are the standard SI prefixes for milli or for kilo. So what does it mean in practice? Well, for sterilization, typically energies ranging from 3 to 10 million electron volts, or that's 3 to 10 million MeV, is required for the sterilization of, say, the common single-use disposable technologies that are commonplace in pharmaceuticals. So that's the amount of energy imparted. The actual irradiation dose is measured in grays or kilograys. And the gray is a unit of ionizing radiation dose defined as the absorption of one joule of radiation energy per kilogram of matter. So that's a little bit of background. But what does this actually mean in practice? Well, an electron beam produces electrons 
through the generation of an electrical current. And these electrons are accelerated to close to the speed of light using a device called an accelerator. And that's contained within a radiation shield, normally concrete, to protect other people. And the device focuses electrons. And in focusing them, it ensures they follow a sweeping motion, sufficient to cover the item to be sterilised. So our item to be sterilised is passed through this curtain of electrons at a controlled speed. And provided we get the sufficient energy of electrons right and the speed right, then we can penetrate through the item. And typically, standard E-beam can penetrate to around 90 centimetres of an item, or for those who are used to imperial measurements, around 35 um, inches. And this is sufficient to achieve microbial kill. So microbial kill happens as the electrons absorbed by the product undergoing sterilization. And when the electrons come into contact with microorganisms, bacteria and fungi, this is sufficient to destroy the DNA of any live microorganisms. And this is through a process of destruction called DNA chain cleavage. And DNA change cleavage occurs by changing the chemical and molecular bonds, often causing the bonds to break within the DNA. So whether any microorganisms survive or not, whether we truly achieve sterilization or we do not, is based on the absorbed dose. So the generally uh, there's a, a, a mathematical expression that the higher the absorbed dose, then the smaller the fraction of surviving microorganisms. And like any form of sterilization, we can express that through the D value or the decimal reduction value. And the D value for the determination of radiation is by dosage rather than time, as we might use with, say, steam sterilization. And the D value is the dose necessary to achieve a 90% um, reduction. And generally, the time required to achieve sterilization for a standard item is around five to seven minutes. Now, there are a number of variables that can affect the efficacy of the process. So the orientation of the product relative to the E-beam, beam energy, beam power, product conveyance, material compatibility and dose uniformity are all important factors. An important design element of uh, E-beam is dose mapping. And this is the measurement of dose distribution as well as the variability in the material irradiated under specified conditions. So a standard e-beam facility is designed to achieve uh, dose uniformity inside the process load. So that's a fair enough concept, but uh, to demonstrate the effectiveness of that, we need to ensure that we've undertaken an adequate dose audit. And this audit requires the treatment of samples at a dose specific to the item and this is about applying a lower dose in order to verify the appropriate sterility assurance level. In terms of the advantages and disadvantages of e-beam as a technology, the advantages are that it's a fast process and we've already spoken about the time um, being about five to seven minutes typically. Um, compared to other sterilization methods, particularly uh, gamma radiation, there is less oxidative damage to the treated product. And color changes are rare, although with some polymer products there is an initial yellow tint that develops, although this is generally short-lived. 
There are no chemical residues and it's relatively rare for there to be induced radioactivity although this theoretically can occur when we start processing a product at 10 MeV or greater. Therefore an activation assessment is required. In terms of disadvantages, E-beam sterilisation or the E-beam itself tends to be less penetrative compared with radiation sterilisation using gamma. And we can have some ongoing concerns for particular products um, in terms of a radiolytic by-product that can occur with certain materials. Therefore we need to be sure that the product that we're using is going to be suitable for its intended use in terms of this by-product. So if we were to put a biologic into the product then we would need to be mindful of that. Another important element is validation and validation is obviously essential with any sterilization process and here we're seeking to confirm by using objective evidence that the requirements of the specified use of the e-beam has been fulfilled. So the optimal validation approach is to deliver sublethal doses to a number of units of the product to be treated. So this is a dose less than the theoretical minimum dose to achieve sterility. So here we'd assess the initial bio burden and then we'd assess the bio burden at this sublethal dose. And we were looking for a ratio of around two units recovering low level by burden out of every 100. And then the dose can be increased and through this level of overkill we can then achieve the required level of sterilization which is a sterility assurance level of 10 to the minus 6 or 10 to the minus 12 depending upon where we're pitching it but certainly that's the area that we're aiming for in order to achieve the necessary sterilization but it's important to undertake periodic by burden assessments to make sure that the uh, dose remains effective and to periodically test items of the finished product to make sure that the um, sterilization is being achieved and also to undertake uh, dose map audits as well to ensure that we're treating the object as intended. Okay so this brings this video to an end and we've been looking at e-beam electron beam sterilization. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching I'm Dr. Tim Sandal and um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, if you look there's a variety of microbiology, sterilization, contamination control related videos and there's more to come. So thank you very much for your attention and 